How's everybody? Not very good. Not very good. <coughs> yes, it was cold for camping last night, wasn't it? Yeah. Excellent job. Well, you know, it's funny that you said that you're not very good this morning because you know how I was feeling yesterday morning? Not very good. Yeah, do you remember what it was like yesterday morning? No. It was like rainy and freezing cold. And I was kind of tired. <coughs> But yeah, I was just feeling kind of sad, and I kind of didn't have very good energy. And so I said, God, I'm really feeling sad this morning. And I sat there, and I had my cup of coffee, and I still felt sad. I said, God, I still am feeling sad and tired this morning. And I just sat there, and I had my cup of coffee, and I still felt sad. And then I thought, you know what? Maybe instead of sitting here with my cup of coffee um, and not doing anything, maybe what God is telling me to do, because I was talking about it, is to add something that can make me happy. To add something in so that this sad feeling can go to the side, can go away. And so I went over to the DVD player, not the DVD player, the CD player, and I found a CD that this is called um, Praise Songs. This is kind of like DBS songs. Yeah, you hear it. Yeah. And I put that in my CD player because I wanted to listen to music that could remind me that God loves me, and I knew that would help me feel better. And then I looked at the huge pile of apples that Sam brought from Lori Downs' house. Thank you. No, no thank you, Lori. <laughs> 20 pounds of apples at least. And I said, I think that I have time to make applesauce. And so I got up and I got my little peeler, core slicer thing and spun the apples around and around and around. Yet, and then I had to put the apples in the pot and it started to smell so good. And I made four jars of applesauce like this. Good. Yeah, all those apples that I just made four jars of applesauce. But it smelled really good. And I thought, you know what? I think that that's something that we can do because lots of us have bad news sometimes, right? Yeah. And we can talk to God about it and then we can ask for God's help and say, God, what can we do to fill this sad space with something happy? And so I filled it with songs about God and I filled it with a beautiful smell of apples and it did make me feel better. And the reason I'm telling you that story is because we're talking today in church about a woman who had a bunch of sad and difficult things in her life but she was able to push them to the side when she brought Jesus a very happy and positive and joyful and wonderful thing into her life. So we're going to be talking about Mary. Yes? But yesterday, you know, I accidentally hit me in the eye mm -hmm. with um, two shoulders okay. and a brownie. Mm -hmm. Yes. That's true. There's all sorts of things that can make us feel better. But God can come and help us make us feel better if we ask for God to come and take the place of the thing that was making us feel sad. Got it? Yes. Got it. But if the thing that's making you feel sad is your brother or sister, that is not, and you can kick them outside. And say, <laughs> brother, be with God, not with you. Okay. So today is a song Sunday, so you all are going to go with Sam and learn a song, and you're going to present one of them um, for us next week as special music during church. Yay! Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. Okay, let's pray. Yay! Lord God, thank you that you can fill our lives with things that bring us joy, even on days that we feel sad, God, that your presence and your company and your love can help us to feel better. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. In you, Lord my God, I put my trust. I trust in you. Do not let me be put to shame, nor let my enemies triumph over me. No one who hopes in you will ever be put to shame, but shame will come on those who are treacherous without cause. Show me your ways, Lord. Teach me your paths. Guide me in your truth and teach me. For you are God, my Savior and my hope is in you all day long. Remember, Lord, your great mercy and love, for they are from of old. Do not remember the sins of my youth and my rebellious ways. According to your love, remember me, for you, Lord, are good. Good and upright is the Lord. 
Therefore he instructs sinners in his ways. He guides the humble in what is right and teaches them his way. And now please hear the scripture lesson from the Gospel of Luke. Today's lesson comes from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 8, verses 1 through 3. After this, tra after this, Jesus traveled about from one town and village to another, proclaiming the good news of the kingdom of God. The twelve were with him, and also some women who had been cured of evil spirits and diseases. Mary, called Magdalene, from whom seven demons had come out, Joanna, the wife of Chusa, the manager of Herod's household, Susanna, and many others. These women were helping to support them out of their own means. This is the word of the Lord. I'm going to go get myself a treat. And if you don't like Starbucks, I know some people are very opinionated about this. 
Fill in your own coffee shop. Okay. So you drive by and say, I'm gonna go get a treat, okay? And you go through the drive-thru and, and you get that cup of coffee, it's so good. And you happen to notice when you're on the drive-thru that there's this rewards program, you know, if you get so many, then you get a free thing. Or if you're at Starbucks, there's actually an app that you can pay through your app. You can pre-order through your app. Anybody do this? Only Amanda, and she's working there right now, by the way. <laughs> and this is amazing. And so now you realize you have extra points, and you go through Starbucks again. And then you're going and going. And pretty soon, this is a daily thing that you really look forward to. And you feel great when you're able to get that extra cup of coffee for your coworker who you know is having a hard day. Or if you miss breakfast, and you can get a sandwich and know the exact calorie count, because that's how Starbucks. So you're doing this, and it's wonderful, and it's bringing joy. You brought in a joyful thing. And then you look at your credit card statement at the end of the month, and you realize that the cup of coffee for you and for your coworker and the little treat every so often is 125 bucks in a month. And all of a sudden, you're saying, I shouldn't be doing this with my money. I have got to spend my money on other things. I need to move that aside. I need to move that aside. I want to change that. Now, if you decided, I'm just going to stop going to Starbucks, I'm just not going to do it, I'm going to keep driving, every time you drove by the Starbucks coffee, your hands would tighten on the steering wheel. And you would feel just a little bit deprived, a little bit of resentment, right? You'd be like, oh, I can't have my treat anymore. And it would, like, ruin the start of your day. But what if, when you said, I'm going to move aside this one thing, I'm going to replace it? with something that brings me joy, something that is fulfilling. So you go to the store and you get a very nice pound of excellent coffee. It was so good, it cost $9 a pound. And then you got the special creamer to go along with it. And so now, for about 12 bucks a month, now you have a really delicious cup of coffee in your hand as you drive by the Starbucks. And now you don't feel as resentful, do you? Because you put something positive in its place. The sermon series that we're doing this whole year is called Cast of Characters. And it's about 19 different characters from the Bible, just regular people that God used to do great things, to teach us lessons about our own life. Uh, it's based on a book of the same name by Max Lucado and two other books that he wrote. And this week we're talking about Mary Magdalene. It's easy to get all the Marys in the Bible confused. I still get the Marys in the Bible confused. When I looked at Max's book in the table of contents, I said, which one is this now? And so I had to go do a little reading. Mary is the one who is listed, not as a disciple, but with the disciples. Disciples being a category for men. If I had written it, it would be different. <laughs> but Mary, who is mentioned up to 14 times in any one of the Gospels. Mary, who is mentioned more than many of the disciples, because she is right along with them the whole way. The first time we hear about her is in, in Luke, is in this scripture lesson. And it says, Mary is the one from whom seven demons were, were pushed aside. She is the one who's released from seven demons. And before you're like, what? Demons? Like, I, I'm not really for sure. The world has changed a lot. People have not changed. When we talk about the seven demons that Mary has, these are things that we're going to recognize right away in our own lives. Seven things that destroy ourselves, that diminish others, that harm God, that bring death. Seven things like, I don't know, maybe she grew up with a really critical older sister and learned that she was worthless from a very young age. And maybe that's something she carries with her and she thinks that everything she does absolutely doesn't measure up. And her self-esteem is down here. Maybe one of Mary's demons was that she had abuse that happened in her household. And as she grew up, she then became someone who abused. Maybe one of Mary's demons is that she doesn't take care of her body very well. Either she overheats or undereats. Maybe she abuses alcohol or drugs. Maybe she harms her body. Maybe one of Mary's demons is that she lies. Maybe she judges. These are all things that diminish Mary's life, that harm other people, that bring death to herself and to other people in some form. These are like the demons that she would have had. And if she is like us, again, the times have changed, but humanity has not changed, then we know that these things brought her pain. That she would look at the thing that she did and say, oh, I can't believe I did that again. I do not want to be doing that. I want to change that. I want to put that aside. I don't want to do it anymore. And it made her feel awful because nothing was working to change it. And 
until she met Jesus. First time she heard Jesus speak, we know that she must just be blown away with the way that this guy talked about God and the coming kingdom of God, the way that she saw him heal other people, the sense of peace that she had, the sense that, that maybe God could actually love her, even with all of these demons struggling around in her. Maybe that God was powerful and mighty and could bring change to her life. She had a sense of peace, of joy, of belonging. She experienced that with Jesus for the very first time. And now, instead of just saying, I wish I could get rid of these things and white knuckle it past the Starbucks, get rid of these things, now she says, now I, not only do I want to get rid of those things, I want to put something wonderful in their place. Seven demons, by the way, seven. When the Bible talks about seven, it's saying a full complement, a perfect number, a totally complete number of demons. Now she is going to replace with a totally complete number of things that God is going to give her. So instead of just saying no, now she's saying yes to something that's going to bring her life. Do you see that? So now instead of saying I'm worthless, she's going to say God says that I'm worth something. Instead of harming her body, she's going to say God gave me this body. I need to do something good with it. Instead of uh, perpetuating a cycle of abuse or addiction, she's going to say God gives me power to break this cycle and to be one who brings peace and one who has self-control. Right? She pushes these things aside. She brings something new into her life. And she has changed. She has changed to the point that she follows Jesus from that point with the disciples. She follows him all the way to the cross where he is crucified. She follows him all the way to the tomb Easter Sunday morning so that she can anoint the body of that man who taught her so much. And she is among the very first to witness the resurrection. All because the good things from God came in and she was able to push aside those seven demons. And so the work for us today, the thought work for us today, is to think about new things that come into our lives and the things that go to the side. To be intentional about it. It was easy to get distracted by the Christmas tree and how wonderful it was and not realize that now I'm going to have a real problem when it comes time to snow pants, right? Something had to move aside. It is one thing to say I'm going to change my financial habit and make myself feel deprived, but it is another thing to say I'm going to change my financial habit and I'm going to bring something else that offers joy and peace and love and faith of God in this place. That we would be intentional about the way that we are bringing change into our life, so that we know that there's something joyful and wonderful and of God that we can tie back. To, I can tie coffee back to God in a heartbeat, right? <laughs> it all goes back to God. This is one of the great gifts. I who was it? No, it was Martin Luther. Martin Luther said, "Oh, I don't know if we can say this in Methodist church, but I think Martin, Martin Luther said bears evidence that God loves us." <laughs> Benjamin Franklin. Well, it was Martin Luther who liked it. That's what it was. It did. Yes. Anyway, coffee, an example that God loves us. We thank you for this, you know, this wonderful, something that's going to bring joy, something that's going to bring life, that's going to build you up in all the ways that God wants to build you up. So let's be wise about how we do that. Let's be thoughtful about how we do it. On a day that we're talking about moving old things out and new things in, Boy, does that remind me of this kitchen. <laughs> Doesn't it, right? We're just about to start this, moving an old thing out or taking it apart and putting a new thing in. And I wonder, as I was reflecting on the sermon, I wonder once the old kitchen is gone, we're going to be like, oh, shoot, I really like that one thing about the old kitchen. That's a challenge. Let's see if it happens. <laughs> it may or may not happen. But we are investing and in moving that aside so that we can bring a new thing into this space. So that we can enhance our platform for mission and ministry of this community. So that the free-for-all breakfast that serves 100 people a month can be done in a space that is adequate and, and completely up to code. So that we can host outside groups like we're in here last night for their events in a way that is better. So that we can give a space for the dinner church to function. You know, for the first time in so many years, we are regularly using the church China because of that dinner church. And we need that dishwasher. Thank goodness that this new space, this new thing that is coming in, is going to allow.
allow our mission and ministry to be even more energized and better supported. So, when a new thing comes in, an old thing goes out. Let's be thoughtful and wise about putting what we are putting aside and what we are bringing in. That the thing that we are bringing in is from God. Whether it be a Christmas tree or a delicious coffee, whether it be an important decision about our own life according to God, or whether it be a kitchen that can bless the community. Amen. Amen. We are going to be sharing in celebration of Holy Communion. Here we use grape juice.
one of you is here, members of the church, and especially um, our bishop's representative, the assistant to the bishop, Erica Robinson Johnson, and also uh, Representative Brad Jones and Senator Bruce Tarr. We really appreciate you coming here and helping us celebrate um, what is just uh, a very long cue for me. <laughs> yeah, that's right, right I think I rolled down the hill. I didn't even get pretty far. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're just glad you could help celebrate with us a realization of a long held dream here. Um, we remember that our help is in the name of the Lord who made heaven and earth, and unless the Lord builds the house, the workers labor in vain. And so we trust that God is helping us to continue to build on this house of worship and that we do not labor in vain, but to God's glory. Let us pray. Everlasting God, you are so far above us, and yet you are always still near us. Be present with us right now, gathered here to set apart this ground on which we stand, on which we stand to the honor and glory of your great name. Let your spirit depend, descend upon your church that will come together here. And within these walls, in this kitchen, let your glory dwell. Fill with your love all who shall seek your face here. As they depart from this place, go with them in the peace and power of your Holy Spirit. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. 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 And I invite you to hear these words from the book of Ezra. The temple of Israel had been destroyed not once but twice. The second time they were going to rebuild the temple, Ezra records this. When the builders laid the foundation of the temple of the Lord, the priests took their vestments and trumpets, the Levites, the sons of Asaph, with cymbals. They took their places to praise God, as prescribed by King David of Israel. With praise and thanksgiving, they said, sang to the Lord, He is good, and His love lasts forever. And all the people gave a great shout of praise to the Lord, because the foundation of the house of the Lord was laid. Many of the older priests and Levites and family heads who had seen the former temple wept aloud when they saw the foundation of this temple being laid, while so many others shouted for joy. No one could distinguish the sounds of joy heard from the sounds of weeping, because the people made so much noise, and the sound was heard far away. We pray that the sound, the impact of this kitchen expansion project will be heard far away. I'd like to invite our distinguished guests to give us just a brief word. I know that uh, Erica has brought a letter from the bishop, and I know also I'm sure that our uh, representative and senator would like to speak as well. Well, as the uh, member of the general court that traveled the furthest to be here this morning, I get to go first, I guess. But, uh, but it, was a, it was a great journey, and, and, and what a beautiful morning, uh, which I think uh, speaks to the bounty uh, and the blessing that is here this morning for all of us to gather and uh, begin uh, the first steps, the first tangible steps uh, of the expansion of this kitchen, which is so important to the mission uh, of the church. And uh, we know that uh, spiritual nourishment is important, but we also know what a role being able to provide nutrition plays, uh, not only in helping our neighbors, but also uh, here where you have the very unique aspect of the dinner church, uh, which is part of gathering people around that harvest table to be able to uh, share in a sense of community uh, and in a sense of the parish. So I'm uh, very happy to be here. I want to congratulate everyone that uh, was able to put this together so that we can put these shovels in the ground because Representative Jones and I know how it, it can be very difficult to get any construction project started. <laughs> and so we know that there's, behind this day, there have been a lot of people uh, that have had some uh, intense work to do, maybe some late nights, maybe sharpening of pencils, maybe wondering, uh, is, there, is the money going to be there? Are the permits going to be Is everything going to come out okay? Well, you know what? Uh, today we celebrate the fact that all of those things are in place, and we can move forward, and this congregation will have the kind of uh, kitchen that it needs and deserves to be able to fulfill its mission. And I'm just delighted to be here with all of you. So thank you to all of you and congratulations. Thank you. Good morning. I'm Erica Robinson Johnson, and I um, am glad to be here today, too. As your neighbor, I live in Reading, and I celebrate with you this great accomplishment. But I bring greetings from Bishop Devadar, who couldn't be here today. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, Greetings in the precious name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I regret that due to a prior commitment, I'm unable to be with you today for your groundbreaking ceremony, for your kitchen expansion and renovations. I give thanks to our Creator God in and through the precious name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, for the faithfulness and commitment of the Aldersgate United Methodist Church to open its doors and offer food, a warm welcome, and witness to the community. In addition to prayers for the construction process to progress smoothly and in a timely manner, 
I also offer prayers for the ministry and hospitality this new space will make possible as Aldersgate UMC continues its mission of building disciples for the transformation of the world. May the words of the Apostle Paul to the Church of Corinth carry you through this project. And God is able to make all grace abound to you, so that having all sufficiency in all things at all times, you may abound in every good work. 2 Corinthians 9, 8. In Christ's love, Bishop Sudashana Devon. Thanks for having me here this morning. It's, it's nice uh, to be here uh, at what I will consider, a, for me, a neighborhood event, uh, as I live only a stone's throw away. And I uh, had the opportunity to attend Bible school here um, more years ago than I can care to remember, uh, probably some 40 years ago, and that was just a quick walk over. Uh, but uh, it, it's great to see that not only is this a North Reading event, uh, but it's a broader community event, because we have people here from Wilmington. Uh, I have a uh, parishioner I know from North Andover. Uh, in Reading and Middleton, uh, and I think that speaks to uh, the mission of the church uh, and the wonderful work uh, that you all do, um, but that, uh, that Rachel does. Uh, and we always see her with a kind word and a smiling face. Sometimes it's in her official capacity as clergy here, uh, sometimes it's just as a mom at, at an event, and I see her out and about all the time. Uh, this is a tremendous addition, uh, and we hope the noise from this project is heard, but not too late at night. Um, <laughs> At least in the neighborhood anyways. Uh, but congratulations, thank you for having me today. Uh, this is a wonderful addition to the North Reading community, uh, this particular neighborhood, uh, and the community beyond North Reading. So thank you and congratulations. We'll have our moments with shovels and pictures in just a second. But to the glory of God and to the presence of this congregation, I now direct that ground be broken at Aldersgate United Methodist Church for the purpose of the renovation and expansion of our kitchen. The responsibility and privilege rest upon us to cause a building to rise here that should be a house of this people of God and a place devoted to the worship of Almighty God and to the glory of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. All right. So at this time, I'd like to invite uh, Pastor Rachel uh, Senator Tarr and Representative Jones to come forward and uh, take the first scoop, ceremonial scoops of dirt for us. Okay. Well, we're not used to shoveling dirt. <laughs> <laughs> In a couple hours, we should really have this done. Let's go. <laughs> All right, wait a minute. Heads up, everybody. Ready? One, two, three. <laughs> so I'd like to now invite um, Erica forward, uh, Norma, and uh, Rob Wilkinson to take ceremonial shovels forward. <laughs> you wore the perfect shoes for this. <laughs> Thank you for importing the nice soft dirt. That was great. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. That's great. So All pick right. it up and then pose for picture and yeah. <laughs> toss. 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 Okay. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you. All right, that concludes our public jump out and ceremony. Thank you very much, everyone. Two-minute rule, go get food. Wow. <laughs> the legislature should be so efficient. Look at that. <laughs>